When learning a new programming language, one of the crucial points is always to learn about their standard library and how to use it. Now, one of the most important parts of that is always the collections API, like in Java. And the great thing is, of course, when you come from Java and you want to learn Kotlin, there's not much of a transition cost because, well, also the collections API is based on the Java collections API. And generally you can use all the libraries and classes from Java in Kotlin. So coming from a Java background, it's really easy to get started. And in this lecture, we're going to take a look at exactly the collections API so that we have a good understanding of also the differences in Kotlin and what Kotlin actually extends when compared to the Java collections. Let's go ahead and dive in. So as I mentioned, the Kotlin collections API builds upon the Java collections and it adds many useful library functions. And another very important benefit is that in Kotlin, there is a clear distinction between mutable collections and immutable collections, which of course is again aligned with the principle of preferring immutability in Kotlin. So for instance, in Kotlin, there's a type list, which is generic, so you can have a list of int, for example. And this type here is only there to represent immutable lists. And the same also goes for a set or map and so on. And if you do actually want to have a mutable list, there's another interface, mutable list, which adds all the methods which can actually well mutate a list, like adding an element, removing an element, and so on. And in contrast, the list interface only provides methods like get an element at index i and things like those which cannot change the list. So the interface list of t only has the read-only attributes and the interface mutable list of t has all the methods that can actually mutate a list. But now let's take a look at how to actually use them and create arrays, lists, sets, maps, and so on in Kotlin. And the great thing is that in Kotlin there are many helper functions to let you create any type of collection very easily. So let's for example go ahead and create an array and just set that equal to array of which is the helper function to create an array. And you can see it takes a var arc of elements that you want to have inside the array. So let's just go ahead and say two, three, five, seven, 11 and 13. And if you run this, you're gonna have the array variable here containing exactly that array of integers. So internally it's gonna be an array of int. And you can see that arrays, just like in Java, don't have a useful toString method defined. So they're just going to give you the address of the array in the memory. Now, if you do want to print an array, you can still use join to string. And let's try to use that without any parameters or arguments to just use the default ones. And you can see that's going to have a nice result in the command line. All right, so next, when you want to have an array like this, you can actually also use specific helper functions, like in this case, int array of, which will then internally use a primitive int type, just like in Java. So on the JVM, they're gonna map this to Java's primitive int type. So you can also use int array of to use that. And there are also helper functions like double array of and so on. So very easy to create arrays. And the same also goes for list. So there's list of, and you can simply create a list here. Let's say the Fibonacci sequence or the beginning of the Fibonacci sequence. Just create a list like this. And as you may already assume, this is actually gonna create an immutable list. So this is again, of course, in line with preferring immutability in Kotlin. If you do want to have a mutable list, so let's say mutable list, you can use the helper function mutable list of and that's going to create a mutable list that you can still modify. So you could go ahead and say mutable list at index zero should be 99. And then if I go ahead and print this, you can see that the first element in the list is now 99 instead of one. And of course, just to demonstrate, you can do that with a list. So if I want to set this to 99, you can see we have an error, which basically states that you cannot set any new element on this immutable list. And you can use this the exact same way as lists. So again, there's a helper function set off. And if I put in multiples there, then as you know, with a set, you cannot have multiple instances of the same element in the set. 
So if I do this with two ones in the set of arguments, then the set here is actually going to come back with only one, two, three. So the duplicates have all been removed. And of course, you can again say mutable and use the mutable set of helper function in order to create such a set where you can still add elements later on. So this is then also going to use the interface mutable set, which also lets you add new elements, for example, or remove elements from the set. But let's first go ahead and just print this out. And that's going to come back with one, two, three. But in contrast to the set above, you could now use functions like add or remove in order to change the set later on. All right, so lastly, let's take a look at maps in Kotlin. So you can go ahead and say map is equal to map of, and then the map of function actually takes a var arc of pairs. So you could go ahead here and say pair of one to Kotlin, pair of two to Android, or whatever type you want. You don't have to have an integer as the key. You don't have to have strings as the values. You can use any types you want. In this case, of course, this variable here would be of type map of int to string, but Kotlin can infer that for us, so we don't need to do that here. So let's just go ahead for now and run this line to create this map with two entries in it, and then just try to print out the map. And this should normally come back with an output where it says one equals Kotlin and two equals Android. But the preview version here or the REPL in the preview version has some issues with printing out the results of the statements. So let's just go on and move on for now to see how to also create mutable maps and also a nice syntax in Kotlin to create maps like this. So first of all, to create a mutable map, you can maybe already guess this, you can use the helper function mutable map of, and then just use the exact same kind of arguments. But to create a pair like that, you can actually use the to function in Kotlin, which is a very nice feature for this. So to make clear what's happening here, let's actually call it like this. To is just a helper function, just like mutable map of, that's available in your well, namespace or in your scope or automatically. So two is just a helper function that's available just like mutable map of or array of. And you could say here that you want to map one to Kotlin and two to Android. But what's great about this function here is that it's actually declared as an infix function, which we're gonna take a look at later on in the course. So what you can actually do is you can use two as an infix function, so you can put it between the two arguments, saying mutable map of one to Kotlin and two to Android, and that's gonna work just fine. And it's the same thing as calling the to function on the arguments to and Android. But it's just a very nice and readable and expressive syntax using the infix function notation. And of course, you're also going to learn later on how you can create your own infix functions. But for now, it's just a nice tool to create maps in a more readable way. One last thing I want to mention about collections in general is you can easily create copies using the toList function. So let's say we want to create a list that has the same elements as our set variable. Then we can just say list is set to list. But be aware that this only creates a shallow copy. So if you have objects in there, those objects will not be copied recursively. But for collections of integers, doubles, and so on, this is no problem, and you can easily create a copy using toList. All right, so that's all about arrays, lists, sets, and maps in Kotlin. And what's important to take away here is that we have the clear distinction between mutable and immutable collections, and you should always prefer immutable collections unless you really do need to change the collection later on. And also remember that there are those very useful helper functions you can use to create any kind of collection in Kotlin. That's all for this lecture, so I look forward to seeing you again in the next one.